Hey, welcome back to another week of Isolation Youth Group. I'm glad you can be joining us today for, uh, for another week of teaching. Um, I've got a, got a great series this week. We're starting a series for the next four weeks um, on change and specifically how prayer can be the agent of change in our lives. So to start this out, I want to ask you a question. If you could, if you had the, the ability to, to go back in time and change something about your past, would you? I think for a lot of us, we would probably look at that and say, yeah, there is a lot of things I'd want to change, um, whether it be you know, a bad grade I got in a class that I thought I could have been better on, um, a bad relationship that I had with someone, um, or even just a bad haircut. I know I've had plenty of those. I've given some to myself, if I'm being honest. And, and we like to think, you know, I would love to change that. Change is something that I think is often on our mind. Um, it's something where even when we don't know what we're changing, we still want change of some sort. Um, you know, not, not to get too political, but I remember in 2008 when Barack Obama was first running for president, um, his slogan was just change. And people rallied behind that because that's what people wanted. People wanted change. So it's something that we think about so much, but we need to know what actually can cause that change in our lives. We can't go back in the past and change things, but we can change you know, our present and our future and make it better. So uh, we're going to be looking at that and specifically, like I said, how the agent of change is prayer and how that can really um, just impact our lives in a positive way. So, you know, if you're, if you're skeptical about, you know, this God stuff, I know we've got, we've got different beliefs, even just in our youth group. And you're thinking, you know, What's the point? Prayer, it doesn't matter, it doesn't work. Why, why should I sit here and listen to it? I encourage you to stick around for these next four weeks. Really pay attention, really just have an open mind to, to hearing what I'm saying, to see what scripture is talking about, um, and see how it changes your life going forward. So I know a lot of us, we've probably wondered, you know, I pray a lot, but I feel like nothing ever happens. We kind of wonder like, okay, why don't our prayers get answered? I think often it's because we have the wrong definition of prayer. Um, that's kind of what I want to what I want to look at today is that definition of what is kind of the start and the ending of prayer. I think often we look at prayer, we see it as I have a need, I'm going to present it to God, and then God is going to fix my need. And when we do that, we ask God for things that we want. And often why our prayers aren't answered then is because we're not asking actually with God in mind, we're asking selfishly. What I want to present to you guys today is that prayer should begin, but also end with God. The prayer should begin, but also end with God. I want to pull uh, over our whiteboard here to give, have a little example illustration um, of actually how this looks. First off, I have to erase this, but I, make, I want to make sure we all understand this. This is an important point. Uh, it has nothing to do with my lesson. I think it's just something important for us to, to understand you know, in life. So I'll erase that quickly here. Uh, it's still a little bit in the background. What a shame. I guess that will just have to stay. But I want to give this little, this little illustration of how we think about prayer. So we've got God at the top. Now I'm going to write my name. Hopefully you can see that. We've got Kyle written at the bottom. Um, you know, input your own name here. But how, how we often see prayer, like I've kind of said, is as a straight line of just us to God, if we talk to God and we say everything that's on our hearts, everything that's on our minds, we tell God what we want, we tell God what we need. And so that is often how we see prayer. But I want to look at this, um, this passage in Romans, in Romans chapter 11. I'm having a little trouble with my notes here. In Romans chapter 11, verses 33 through 36. It says this, Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how un inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has been given a gift to him that he might be repaid for from him and through him and to him are all things to him be glory forever. Amen. See this verse, it doesn't say that everything is from God except for prayer. It doesn't say, but prayer is just for us, from us, to us. 
No, it says all things are from God, through God, and then to God, including prayer. Prayer is not meant to be this one-way communication where we speak to God and that's it. Prayer is meant to be a continuation of a conversation with God, where we are not only speaking to God, but we are listening to Him as He's revealing things to us, revealing things that come from Him. And so with that said, we change our illustration. We still have us, we still have God, but now what we have is a circle. It's an awkward circle, but it's a circle nonetheless. And what we see here is that now God is the beginning of prayer. He speaks to us. But God is also the end of prayer, as then we then speak to God. So we see here, see, as we see in Romans, all things are from Him, through Him, and to Him. And so it's the circle. And that's this big thing we need to understand with prayer. It's not just a one-way us to God. It is us actually speaking with God, listening with Him, as in a conversation. But there, there's also this, um, there's a little bit more to it. There's a, you know, if you grow up in the church, you, or you've been to youth group enough, you've probably heard the word Trinity. You know, we talk about God, we, we talk about God being the Trinity. What that means is He is actually three persons in one. Um, and I can't get into the full exp explanation of how it works, but it really affects the, the way that we actually relate with God. And so what we have then, is we have over here, all right, and off to the side, We've got Jesus. That's a horrible S, but you know, you get the picture. I'm going to let you use your imagination to say that that's a good S there. And over here, we have the Holy Spirit. Hopefully you guys can read that well. So we've got the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and us. So when the Bible talks about prayer, it talks about every person of the Trinity, God the Father. Let me write that in, actually. So God the Father, because Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God. So there's the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So we have the three persons of the Trinity, all part of, all part of prayer, the Father, Holy Spirit, and Jesus. And they all interact with us in a different way. So I want to look at first the Holy Spirit. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. This is what it says to us about the Holy Spirit and how He works with us during prayer. So, 1 Corinthians 2, 10-12 says this, For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. Let me read the end of the verse 12 there again. Or I'll just read the, actually the entire verse. It says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. The, whole, the, the role of the Holy Spirit is for understanding. It actually allows us to understand God the Father, to understand His ways and, and His will. Um, you know, I get that question from a lot of people of, you know, how do I know what God wants for me in my life? And the truth is, um, prayer. By talking to God, that's how we understand God. God wants to reveal Himself to us, and He has done that through the Holy Spirit. Where as a believer, we actually have the Holy Spirit, which is God Himself, dwelling inside of us, now teaching us how to live, teaching us what it is that He asks of us. You know, it'd be amazing to, um, to be able to understand people's thoughts. You know, I wish I, wish I could understand my wife's thoughts, because although she is really easy to communicate with. Um, sometimes I wonder what, what she's thinking about. I wonder what is going through her mind. I want to understand her better. Um, I can't do that all the time because I'm not always very smart. I also would love to read my daughter's thoughts. She's about eight months old. Um, she can't talk, so I have no idea what's going through her mind. 
it would, I, I think it would be a blast to be able to understand. I'm sure a lot of us, we'd love to hear the thoughts of you know, our pets or animals um, to see what they're thinking. Maybe at the same time you're like, hey, I don't want to know what my cat's thinking about me because cats are evil and they only think bad things. But you probably want to understand what your dog is saying because dogs are great. They love you no matter what. And I'm, I'm sure what they're always thinking is, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Cats, no. Cats don't think that. But we can't. Unfortunately, we can't understand what the thoughts of someone is. But we can understand the thoughts of God through the Holy Spirit. And I think that's amazing. I think that's something we really take that to heart. It will change the way um, that we kind of go into prayer, of really going into it and thinking, you know, what can I get out of this? So that's the Holy Spirit. That's what we hear, we see about the Holy Spirit. So, how about Jesus? Where does Jesus come into this? Well, if we uh, shoot my passage, there we go. In Romans 8, we see Jesus' role in this. In Romans 8, verse 34. Romans 8, verse 34. This is what tells us how Jesus interacts with, with us in prayer. It says, Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that who was raised, who is, who is at the right hand of God, and who is indeed interceding for us. So it says that Jesus, who, who died, was raised again. And when he was raised, he was now brought back to his heavenly place, back with God the Father in the heavens. Um, it says he's interceding for us. I don't know if you guys have, have ever had someone who, is, who has stood up for you or who has done something on your behalf. But it's a great feeling. I think most of the time it's this amazing feeling to be like, wow, someone cares so much about me that they're going to take what I care about and bring it up to someone else to make sure it gets done. And that's what Jesus is doing. He cares about us so much that he is with God and he is on our behalf taking our prayers to God himself, to the Father. And I think just, I don't know what, I don't know what kind of conversation that is. I, I can imagine it's pretty amazing, but he is wanting us to be taken care of. And he's doing that on our behalf because of this great deep love for us that he has. So we see, we see the Holy Spirit who indwells in us, allows us to communicate with God. We have Jesus who intercedes for us, brings our prayers as his own to God. So where do we fall into this? Well, our part, we're going to go to the, the book of John. And in John chapter 5, verse 19, so it says, um, it says for us, it says about our part. So in John 5, 19, it says, So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that, that, for whatever the Father does, that the Son does like, likewise. Now I know pray, um, Jesus is not specifically talking about prayer here, but he is talking about he does what the Father asks. He does what the Father does. He responds to God and he lives as God would have him live. Jesus calls us to that same exact life. He says, you, talking to us, he says, you live as I have lived. Follow my example and show the world who I am because of that. Jesus is the perfect example of us in the way he lived. A perfect example for us of what it looks like to follow God in pure and true obedience. I think the same thing when it, when it comes to prayer, you know, we're meant to live as Jesus lived. Jesus' life was complete devoted to being in relationship with God. Everything he did had this, this deep connection to God, to the Father, every single thing that he did. He's meant, and he's, he's telling us, you know, you're meant to live that same way. You are meant to live with this deep connection to God the Father, to everything you do, being completely devoted to him. You know, that brings us to, um, you know, to the ending. What we learned today is prayer starts with God and then it ends with God. Not only are we just speaking to God, we're also hearing from God. And a lot of us, we feel kind of down about prayer a lot. Um, we, don't, we don't always feel like our prayers are answered. But like I said, I said this kind of at the beginning, you know, if we really change our mindset about what prayer does, that's when we see the change that comes out of it. When we get out of our own way, we get out of our own thoughts of, um, you know, I'm, I'm praying for what I need, and we start actually praying just to be in relationship with God, 
that's when we see the change happen. That's when we see the change in our lives. We also then see the change in the people around us where we are so, so obedient to God, just so dedicated to our relationship with him that is now flowing to everyone else around us. That is the change that we see through prayer. That's the change that we're going to talk about uh, for the next three weeks as well. So I, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Um, I love any time I get some comments on YouTube or I get someone texting me with their thoughts. I love to hear what you guys are thinking, what is going through your mind. I um, also invite you to join our Thursday afternoon Zoom call. Um, we, we talk about these things. We talk about you know, what is standing out to you, what, what is having an impact. I can usually go into things in a little more detail then as well. We can explain some questions questions that you might have if you're wondering what something means. I um, encourage you to join that. You can just get in touch with me if you don't have the, the information to be a part of that and I'll get that to you right away. You know, we, we have no limit on how many people can join so love for you to be a part of that at 3.30. Every Thursday we're doing that. Um, and thanks for joining today. I'm going to close our time here in prayer and hope you all just have a blessed evening, blessed week as well. God, we thank you so much for, for this time. Um, just the ability that we have to talk to you, but also to listen to you. And I pray that, that that's what we're doing. We are opening ourselves to you, that just hearing as you are speaking to us, um, that, we, that we take you know, take this time serious, take the time to just meditate on who you are, and we really just thrive or just strive to know you deeper, Lord. We love you and praise all in your name. Amen. Thanks for joining, guys. And remember, as always, instead of catching COVID-19, be catching you guys next week. See ya.